This video will look at the probe options within Cuspace, which are within the main profiling window, probe options. And here we can select the probe that we want to work with that's supported by Color Space. And when selected, we'll activate the associated options. Um, the i1 D3, i1 Display Pro, it is a, a Direct Connect probe, which means you don't have to select a comms port for it. it uh, it's all automatically um, connected, as is the i1 Pro 2 and 3s. Um, also, you've got a, an auto button there. What that will do is reconnect to the probe whenever you start Color Space, um, assuming that the probe is physically connected to the Color Space PC. The next option that we have are the calibration settings, which are preset matrices for the connected probe, assuming it has them. Um, and these are held within Color Space itself. And you can select the one that best matches the display technology that you are working with. Uh, we tend not to use these as we tend to prefer using uh, probe matching because it gives a far more accurate uh, result um, than using what are basically um, generic presets. Probe matching is something that there is a separate video for, and we'll come back to this a little bit later here as well. Below that, we've got intelligent integration, and this will basically use the preset NITS value to enable disable intelligent integration on the probes that support it. Presently, it is just the uh, i1 D3. Um, and basically, if a patch reads below the set NITS value, it will immediately take a second reading with a longer integration time and compare that to the first reading. If the two readings are within a tolerance, it will accept that as being valid and move on. If there is a difference, it will take another uh, patch reading with an even longer integration time and compare that to the previous one. And it will do that repeatedly until it hits the maximum integration time for the given probe at that point, that last reading will be the one that it will accept as being the most valid it's going to get. Average low light is uh, an alternative, um, and basically below a set threshold will take multiple readings of the same patch and average the values. Uh, there is no point in using both in intelligent integration and average low light together. And enable visible feedback just enables, disables um, feedback from the probe itself, the hardware. In the case of the i1D3, it just uh, turns on or off the LED light on the side that uh, shows you the probe is connected to and uh, uh, communicating with color space, um, as well as when readings are being taken. With probes such as the Jetty and Klein, um, it will enable, disable the inbuilt laser alignment pointers. If available, the probe calibration will um, perform uh, either a black or white uh, calibration on the probe itself. On the right hand side, we have the probe integration time, which can be set to any given value, either using the slider or numerically entering any direct value you choose to choose. Obviously, the longer the integration time, the slower the probe readings will be and the longer the profiling will take. Um, having a slower read time, so a longer integration time, uh, potentially will give more stable, more accurate results, but at the expense of increased time. But also, if the probe starts to oversaturate, then you will actually get invalid readings. So it's a balance between having stable readings uh, for a, on a given display with the quickest integration time that works. Um, for all of these settings, um, if you're not sure what they do, uh, they are explained in the uh, Light Illusion website. If we actually go to the website and go to Color Space Guides, and if we choose the i1D3, you can see that it will jump to the specific tab for Color Space integration and explains the various menu options and settings. It will also show in this instance uh, integration notes which talk more about the sync modes, frequency, period, burst, um, all in one. So you can understand uh, the benefits uh, or not of the uh, different options and how they work, especially in conjunction with intelligent integration. 
maximum exposure times not used with the i1D3. Um, obviously the sync modes we've just seen within the Light Illusion website. Um, extra delay time is um, a more of a, a global setting. By that I mean um, a, extra delay time is available regardless of the probe that you are using. And what this does is delay the point at which the probe starts taking a reading after the triplet value has been sent to the patch generator. Um, for example, if you have a display that has a um, slow response time to the input video signal, um, you may need to have, you know, quarter of a second, half a second, whatever, extra delay because the patch takes that little bit longer to appear on the display screen being profiled compared to the patch actually popping up on the uh, patch window within color space. Having said that, if you're using an external TPG, it's unlikely that that will require extra delay because the triplet value is sent to the TPG before the patch changes within color space. So there should not be any extra delay time required when using external hardware test patch generators. The other use for extra delay time is if the display has a color memory. In other words, it takes a, a little while for a change in color to settle. Um, some technologies like plasmas and uh, uh, OLED can suffer this. So you may want to add a little bit of extra delay time to allow the patch to settle before you start reading it. Again, the slider sets the value, or you can directly set any value you want using the numeric input. Probe offset um, is for uh, adding things like JUD offset values. Um, nowadays, not really used because uh, perceptual matching gives much better result um, and it's something that we would certainly uh, tend to use in preference to just a simple probe offset. And then we've got the probe matching. Um, probe matching, we said we'll come back to you because it's one option that is actually available when the probes are not connected. Because with color space, probe matching is retrospective, which means you can profile a display, uh, save the profile, and then apply probe matching to it after the event. So you don't have to have a probe connected to be able to use probe matching, so long as you have obviously um, added the uh, correct probe measurement data um, into the uh, probe matching window in advance. So let's connect to the i1D3. We'll pop up the patch window and we will start a new. So let's just take off none. Just as a safety precaution, you don't want to have anything in the reference probes when you're doing a new measurement, just to be safe. It should make no difference, but just in case. So we're going to start a new, and we'll just call this uh, test i1d3. And we can use measure all, which will run through the three color patches and the white patch, uh, red, green, blue, white, um, and take three readings of each and average the value to give you the Y, X, Y values um, for this display with this particular probe. And there we go. You can use the um, measure button to update just that one color. So here we're just going to update red You can also manually enter values. So if you're using um, an external patch generator uh, and, and probe with its own software, you can manually enter readings taken from elsewhere. And at the end of the day, all it means is you have data for the i1 Display Pro on the particular display that you are working on, which you can then match to a spectro that has had the same measurements taken on the same display. And just delete that because we're not going to use it. If you're working with different probes, so let's go to uh, CR100, for example, which is on COM8, connect to that. You can see that the options tend to change uh, dependent on the probe, so they will be in a similar layout but of different options and capabilities.